Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Aber in jenen Tagen, nach diesem Leiden, die Sonne wird verdunkelt, und der Mond wird sein Licht nicht geben, und die Stirne werden von Himmel fallen, und die Kräfte im Himmel werden entschüttert sein. Dann werden sie sehen, wie der Menschensohn in Wolke mit großer Kraft und Herrlichkeit kommt. Dann wird die Engel aus dem Dem und seine Auserwählten von der vier Winden Samen, von den Enden der Erde bis zu den Enden des Himmels. And from the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Pero acerca de ese día ahora nadie sabe ni los ángeles en el cielo ni el hijo sino solo el padre si ha dado mentente alerta porque no sabes cuándo llegará el momento es como un hombre que va de viaja cuando sale de casa y pone a sus esclavos a cargo Cada uno con su trabajo y ordena al portero que está alerta. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is to come. Amen. My apologies for those of you who weren't expecting German being spoken in the church today. My apologies for those who you speak Spanish fluently, how I butchered a few of those words. But Happy New Year, huh? Happy New Year. We sure need one of those, don't we? Yeah. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. While America recovers from the weirdest Thanksgiving weekend in modern history, and the world continues to keep its collective head down to avoid participating in a personal way the impacts of a global pandemic, Christians such as ourselves are turning the corner from the colors of green and white, the season of of ordinary time and the festival of Christ the King to a new year and a new season of Advent blue. So again, Happy New Year. It's time for us to start all over again, again. Pay attention to that second again. Huh? Happy New Year. It's time to start all over again, again. We've done this before. Hmm? Anybody been on the worship team, on the worship committee? Anybody singing the choir? We've done this before. And it's the season to remember the greatness of God and the power of God's purpose as we gather together to remind ourselves of the one who has come into the world and the one who will come again as we profess each Sunday in our creeds. Words that we say over and over again and yet we never tire of hearing their great meaning because repetition 
Repetition is important to us. And I wasn't trying to be cute by reading the gospel in three languages. There was a time in this church, because of your sign out front, the oldest Lutheran church in Texas from 1850, there was a time when this gospel was read in German and everybody understood the preacher. We've done this before. Advent. First Sunday in Advent. Light a candle, sing a song. We've done this before. And there was, there is a time in this church when we find ourselves reading the Gospel of St. Mark in the Spanish language, in many Lutheran churches, even in our own synod. Because we've come to learn that being Lutheran isn't about our nationality or our cultural heritage, but rather we understand our Lutheranism is a global thing now. With over 80 million citizens in the Lutheran church, millions more in Tanzania than in America, millions more in Ethiopia than in the United States that our Lutheran missionary efforts have taken this gospel message because it's not based on our language or the kind of food that we eat, but rather because of the word of God, based on a truth, this word of God that says that we are saved by grace through faith, no matter what continent you live on, no matter what hemisphere you find yourself in, no matter what language you speak, no matter the color of your skin or whether you've been to college or you don't own a pair of shoes, that we are saved by grace through faith, not something of our own doing that has anything to do that any of us could boast, something that we cannot buy with silver or gold, but based on God's, God's doing rooted in the good news that Jesus Christ was crucified for our sins and raised from the grave by God's power to fulfill a promise, to announce an eternal victory over sin and death and the power of the evil one. Happy New Year. It's Advent again, again. Nobody brought any of those noisemakers, huh? Boo, those kind of things. So here we are. Advent 1, 2020, starting all over again, again. And maybe God has our attention a little better this year than in Advent's past. Because it's not a war out there or an impending hurricane coming our way that makes us stay alert and keep watch. The world has been called to be vigilant about something that we cannot see, but we see quite well the results of what it does to people that we love, people that we live with, day after day. This microscopic killer calls us somewhere underneath to be a people of hope even though the call from above in the gospel Jesus says stay alert keep awake this advent may be a little bit different than advents before because Jesus doesn't call us to celebrate he doesn't call us to have a party he calls us to stay awake to be alert that the master will return. The leaves are changing. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. It's a more powerful thing than any of us can imagine. It's okay to ask on a day like today why any of us are here. 
I asked the ushers, I said, do you think the attendance will be up a little bit because it's Thanksgiving weekend? Or do you think it will be down a little bit between Thanksgiving weekend? And being good, rehearsed, and trained ushers, they said, well, attendance has been between 60 and 80. pretty close but why are we here why would any of us I'm not sure where the camera is that the camera right there maybe yeah. is that the camera right there ah why any of us would turn on our laptops or our phones and participate in worship today to ask ourselves what are we doing why as people of faith would we insist on living with two overlapping calendars. Hmm? Happy New Year. It's almost December for crying out loud. One calendar that marks the time and sets the dates to be remembered, celebrated like the January 1st New Year's and Groundhog Day and Spring Break and Mother's Day and Father's Day and the 4th of July and all the tailgates that go with them, all worthy days to remember and celebrate. But yet, as Lutheran Christians, we keep our eyes on a second calendar, or this liturgical calendar, to help us remember and celebrate the story of God in the midst of all those other days on that other calendar. Walk with me for just a little bit. We're going to go from last Sunday to today to next Sunday, last Sunday, next year. That we would spend this Sunday and the next three Sundays getting ready, preparing, waiting for the 12 days of Christmas. And then watch how Ash Wednesday fits on the calendar so that we either have four weeks or five weeks or six weeks or seven weeks or eight weeks of epiphany when the light has come into the world that the darkness cannot overshadow, which the 40 days of Lent, which takes us to Holy Week and the great three days where Jesus gives the sacrament to his disciples, a meal to remember forever till he comes again, to experience and relive in our minds and our hearts the crucifixion and the resurrection. And then let that Easter joy roll for 50 days all the way to Pentecost. And then to use the end of May, summer months, early fall to celebrate now what we call ordinary time all the way to Reformation Sunday and All Saints and Christ the King. And then we're back to Advent 1 and we start all over again, again. Did you notice how the light of God came shining in on those days of rolling from one to the other? In her book, The Wheel of Life, sort of a memoir of Dr. Elizabeth Keebler Ross, who was better known for her book on death and dying, she made this bold remark. There are no accidents. The point of my work for three and a half decades is not about death, but about the importance of life. And if you live every day of your life right, you have nothing to fear about what comes next. Isn't that what Jesus is saying, whether it's in German or English or Spanish or whatever language, that every day counts, that every day matters? That whether it's the first Sunday of Advent or Reformation Day or All Saints Day, every day deserves our attention and our focus on the things that are important. That we would all, in our hearts, have the gumption 
to invite our friends and family to come and, and smell the donkey as it walks from Nazareth. To listen for the animals around the manger. To feel the kick of a baby. And to watch the Son of God be born to the world in human flesh. Who don't we want to know that story? So that they too can walk with us and be alert and keep awake. I like to put it this way sometimes. What if, what if God made a promise to each and every one of us that you can live for 90 years and be relatively healthy up to the very end? Huh? 90 years. You get to live to be 90. And you get to have 30 years of work and 30 years of play and 30 years of sleep all in one chunk. What would you pick first? Would you work? Or would you play first and then take 30 more years to sleep it off? Or would you sleep first and then work and then spend the rest of your life playing? You get to pick. That's the, that's the fun part of this deal. But what happens if we all buy in on it, then when I'm working for 30 years, and you're playing for 30 years, and you're sleeping for 30 years, we never get to meet each other. We never get to hang out with each other. We never get to do the will of God together with each other. And if you're working back there for 30 years, and you in the way back are sleeping for 30 years, and you up front are playing for 30, you never get to hang out with each other. And we miss each other not just like passing ships in the night, but like passing mountain sides. It's a big, it's a big thing. God is so much smarter than that for us. That God would let us to have work and sleep, play, all within a 24-hour period. And we get to do that day after day after day. It's the rhythm of our lives. The liturgical calendar that we're starting all over again, again today is part of the rhythm of our lives. And so why are we here? We come to worship, to talk to God, and remember how important we are to one another. And we come here together to worship to have God talk to us, to remember how important it is to love one another. That's the new year we get to celebrate. So here's six little stories with great big lessons. Once upon a time, the villagers decided to pray for rain. On the day of the prayer, all the people gathered, but only one boy came with an umbrella. That is faith. Number two, when you throw babies in the air, they laugh because they know that you're going to catch them. That's trust. We plan big things for tomorrow in spite of zero knowledge of the future. And that's confidence. We see the world suffering. But still, people get married, have kids, Take on a job, go to school, do the work, love their neighbor, and that's love. An old man's shirt was written, he says, I'm not 80 years old, I'm sweet 16 with 64 years of experience. That's attitude. And every night as we go to bed without any assurance of being alive, tomorrow morning, we still go to bed and set our alarms to wake us up, and that is hope. Advent is the season of hope, 
with blue all over us, the color of hope, in a time when we understand how precious each day is for each one of us and for each one around us. For as Jesus said, therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you all is keep awake. So Happy New Year. It's time to start all over again. Again. Amen.